Now, let me discuss this calcium channel blockers in the treatment of angina. So, until now what we have discussed was, we have discussed the nitrates in the treatment of angina. Now, how these calcium channel blockers are used in the treatment of angina, I will discuss. We don't use all the calcium channel blockers for the treatment of angina. But before that, anyhow, let me give you the list of your the calcium channel blockers. If you take the calcium channel blockers, they are man mainly classified into three types. Number one, the phenyl alkylamines. Number two, benzothiazepines. Number three, dihydropyridines. You take that phenyl alkylamines and as well as benzothiazepines. They are called as non-dihydropyridines. Now, coming to the drugs under your phenyl alkylamines, the phenyl alkylamines they include your verapamil. Whereas, you take your benzothiazepines, they include diltiazem. So, your verapamil and diltiazem, they are non-dihydropyridines. Now, coming to the dihydropyridines, this dihydropyridines again we have three generations first generation second generation and as well as the third generation this first generation dihydropyridines they include nifedipine and second generation dihydropyridines they include nicardepine and as well as philodepine whereas the third generation dihydropyridine they include amlodipine. So this is basically the classification of your calcium channel blockers. Now let me tell you which calcium channel blockers are used in the treatment of your angina. Now the calcium channel blockers which are used in the treatment of angina they are verapamil Number two, diltiazem. Number three, long acting dihydropyridines. Long acting dihydropyridines. So, these are the calcium channel blockers which can be used in the treatment of your angina. Whereas, remember a very important point. The short acting dihydropyridines. Now, what are your short acting dihydropyridines? They include nifedipine. Nifedipine is a short acting dihydropyridines. This should be avoided. Why? Because these can increase or these can precipitate the symptoms of angina by causing tachycardia. Remember, nifedipine is one of your drug where the angina gets precipitated because nifedipine will cause tachycardia. So that is the reason why nifedipine should be avoided in the patients with the angina. Now where are these calcium channel blockers very much effective? These calcium channel blockers, they are very much effective in the treatment of both. So these are effective in the treatment of your classical angina and as well as the prince metal angina. Right? They are useful in your classical angina and as well as prince metal angina which is also called the variant angina. Now, let me tell you the mechanism of action of these drugs. Now let me tell you the mechanism of action of these particular drugs, how they are used in the treatment of angina. The mechanism of action of these calcium channel blockers in the treatment of angina is, these calcium channel blockers, they will cause smooth muscle relaxation. Because they cause this particular smooth muscle relaxation, thereby what will happen? they will cause the arteriolar vasodilatation. Whenever there is arteriolar vasodilatation, the afterload on the heart will be reduced. So this is how the calcium channel blockers 
will be used in the treatment of angina. So, when the afterload on the heart is reduced, what will happen? The demand on the heart will be reduced. When the demand on the heart is reduced, thereby the angina will be reduced in the individual. Now, after having discussed about the mechanism of action of these particular the calcium channel blockers, let me take the adverse effects of this particular calcium channel blockers. You take this nifedipine. What did I tell you? Nifedipine should not be used in the treatment of the angina because nifedipine is a drug which will accentuate or which will precipitate the angina by causing tachycardia. The other point what you should remember about the nifedipine is the adverse effects of your nifedipine is nifedipine is the drug which will cause hyperglycemia. Nifedipine is the drug which will cause hyperglycemia. That means it will increase the blood glucose levels. Now the question comes how this particular nifedipine will cause hyperglycemia. How this nifedipine will cause hyperglycemia is this nifedipine it will decrease the insulin release. It will decrease the insulin release. So thereby nifedipine will cause hyperglycemia. And the other important adverse effects with your the nifedipine what you should remember is in elderly individuals it will cause voiding difficulty right nifedipine it will cause voiding difficulty right nifedipine will cause voiding difficulty in elderly individuals now the question comes how this nifedipine will cause this voiding difficulty in elderly individuals Nifedipine will cause voiding difficulty in elderly individuals by causing relaxation of the urinary bladder. Right? Nifedipine will cause relaxation of the urinary bladder and thereby there will be voiding difficulty in elderly individuals by your nifedipine. Alright? Now, you take the adverse effects with your verapamil. Verapamil is a drug which can be given in angina. Verapamil it will cause constipation verapamil it will cause constipation and the other important adverse effects with verapamil is ankyl edema these are the two important adverse effects what you have to remember with your verapamil and the other important point what you should remember is you take your calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers should be avoided in sick sinus syndrome. Right? This calcium channel blockers. They are avoided in sick sinus syndrome. Right? Now what is your sick sinus syndrome? Sick sinus syndrome is a condition where there is defect in the SA node. So, in this particular six sinus syndrome, the calcium channel blockers, they should be avoided. And even your beta blockers, they should be avoided in these individuals with the six sinus syndrome. Now, the other important point what you should remember is, you take the drug interaction. These drugs will also increase the plasma digoxin concentration by decreasing its excretion. So you have to remember this but a very important drug interaction. The very important drug interaction with the, with the calcium channel blockers is calcium channel blockers will increase the digoxin concentration. How do they increase the digoxin concentration? This calcium channel blockers, they will decrease the digoxin excretion and thereby the calcium channel blockers will increase the digoxin concentration right so these are some of the few important points about your calcium channel blockers right so calcium channel blockers they are also the anti-anginal drugs we don't use all the calcium channel blockers for the treatment of angina mainly we use verapamil diltiazem and long acting dihydropyridines short acting dihydropyridines like nifedipine should not be used because that will precipitate the angina by causing tachycardia and 
you should remember some of the important adverse effects with these particular drugs. You take nifedipine, which we don't use in angina, but remember nifedipine will cause hyperglycemia by reducing the insulin release. Nifedipine will cause voiding difficulty in elderly individual by causing relaxation of the urinary bladder. And you take the adverse effects with your verapamil, it will cause constipation and as well as ankle edema. And this calcium channel blockers, they should be avoided in your sick sinus syndrome along with your beta blockers. And remember, this particular calcium channel blockers, they will increase the plasma digoxin concentration by decreasing its excretion.